Hey YouTube, before I get into my 22 video, hoarding video, this right here is the hub assembly off the front of my Dodge truck. It seized up on me the other day, started making a bunch of noise, and it ended up being a little more difficult to remove and replace than I was anticipating. I consider myself a decent mechanic, and that one fought me from step one all the way to the end. Never seen one lock up like that. I can't turn it. Even with a pry bar and a vice, I can't make it turn. It seized up for some reason. But that leads me to my rant for today. As you can see right there, there's the new one. I went to the three big chain auto parts stores in search of my replacement part. The big three, you know which ones I'm talking about. The first one I went into, they didn't have the part I needed. The second one, I went in, I talked to a young man, probably 20, 21 years old. He had no clue what I was talking about, which I didn't expect him to. And I, then you, you could go in the third one and there would be a, young man or a young lady in there and they don't know they don't have a clue what kind of parts you're needing they'll punch it up on the computer and when they go to the back they don't know if they're looking for a box the size of a pack of cigarettes or a box the size of a 60 inch big screen tv they have no clue now i'm not saying there's nobody in them stores that know what they're talking about but there's certainly a bunch of them in there that don't them big chain stores, all they're worried about is finding somebody to work for nothing. That's all they care about. Who can they get to stand in front of that counter and take your money? And then, when you do buy something from them, they try to sell you a bunch of other stuff you don't need. You go in there and buy a brake caliber. They're going to try to sell you some brake grease, some anti-seize. They're going to try to sell you everything that they, the computer is telling them to try to push you. They're going to, you got to answer 20 questions before you can get out of there. So I had enough of that mess and I went to the local Napa store in our town. The guy that owns this Napa store has had a part store in this town for probably 30 years or more. And he knows what he's talking about. And the people that work for him have been there for years. And they also know what they're talking about. And if they don't, they'll get somebody that does. I went in there. The man that owned the store was standing at the counter. And he's the owner of this store. He's got two stores, matter of fact, in this area. And he asked me what I needed. I told him. He not only advised me on the difference between their lower price part and their higher price part. He told me the torque specs on the bolts that hold the hub on. He told me the torque specs and printed them out for me of the main axle nut. And he knew what he was talking about and he knew what box he was looking for when he went back there to get it. And that's the way it is. Even if their parts may be a few dollars higher, which in this case, they was not higher. Even matter of fact, it was cheaper than two of the three big chain stores. But I'm done with them. I'm going, I'll drive a little extra and go to his store like I should have done in the first place. I knew better, but I was just trying to save some time and ended up going to four stores instead of one. But I know these young men and women need a job, but there's some things that they don't need to be doing. If you don't know the difference between a starter and a windshield wiper blade, maybe you shouldn't be seeking a career in the auto parts industry. That's just my rant on that. But anyway, my video is uh, part two of my 22 hoarding video. Now, I've got some positive comments and some negative comments. And one of them said that my video was called Stop Hoarding, but my main gripe was reselling and they were right that is true hoarding can be defined in many different ways i'm going to say you're a hoarder 
if you've got a lot more 22 ammo now than you did in 2011 before all this crazy mess started. If you had a thousand rounds in 2011 and was happy with it, and you got 10,000 rounds now, you might be hoarding a little bit. Now, in my first video that caused a lot of commotion, I had two or three bricks sitting here. I don't even remember what they were, but they're all gone. I've shot all that. I'm down to this bucket, and I got one brick of that Thunderbolt, and I got a few little miscellaneous 50-round boxes. And that's all I got. I'm going to shoot that brick up. And if it, once it gets warmer outside, that'll be gone. And this bucket will be gone. In a month or two, I'll be needing to buy some more. But the main thing that stirred my first video, as you can tell, I don't rehearse. And I don't edit my videos. What stirred the first video was I was in the local outdoors... I don't know what you'd call it, kind of store here in town that sells guns. And when I go in there, I always go back there and look at the guns, see what's on sale or what they got new. I was back there, and they had probably 40 or 50 bricks of the 22 Thunderbolt. I didn't buy any, but as I was looking at the guns, an older guy come up. He was probably in his 60s and asked what the limit was on the 22 ammo. And the guy behind the counter told him it was three boxes. So the guy said, well, let me have three. And as he was paying, he told the guy behind the counter, I don't even own a twenty-two. He said, I haven't shot a twenty-two in 30-something years, but I figured I see it, I better buy it. Do you believe that? That's what got me a little agitated, and that's what made me come home and make that first video. I guess my video, my videos kind of coincide with whatever mood I'm in that day. But that aggravated me a little. Guy bought 1,500 rounds and knew and just pretty much said, I'm never going to do anything with it. And now there's a father and son or a grandfather and a grandson going to come in here to get some to shoot. And they can't get it because this clown's done bought it and stuck it in his closet. And that's where it'll be when they haul him out of there in a box. And then somebody will throw it in a dumpster and give it to somebody five, ten years from now when that old dude kills over. But... That's not what my beef was about, really. My beef was about the people that are buying it for five or seven cents a round, trying to sell it for ten to fifteen cents a round. Had one guy say that was capitalism. No, that's not capitalism. That is just being a crook. That's being a greedy crook. That's all that is. Trying to take advantage of people and trying to take advantage of your fellow gun owners. That's not capitalism. That's just being a crook it needs a foot in the rear end and if you think that's capitalism you need to get you a book and study capitalism because that ain't what well, that ain't it you're not gonna make a living selling 22 ammo ripping people off every day you just make your little pocket change i hope you feel good about it about screwing over your fellow gun owners but hoarding it is not really my beef. Now, I know a guy that's got probably, he's got over 50,000 rounds, I know. And he only has one twenty two rifle. He lives in a subdivision where you can stand on his front porch, probably see 100 houses. And he'll tell you he hasn't shot a twenty two rifle, 1,000 rounds in his life. And he's now, and he hasn't shot a twenty two rifle in the last 10 years. He's one of them guys that's got to go to a range to shoot if he wants to shoot. Now, I can step out in my backyard, and I can shoot this whole bucket up today if I want to. And that's just where I live, and that's just the way I can do it. But if you if you can't shoot it but once or twice a year, why you got 100,000 rounds? I don't know. But that's your right. If you weigh seven hundred thousand rounds, twenty-two ammo gives you a warm feeling inside. Well, by all means, knock yourself out. But I'm going to say, buy as much as you can shoot. Shoot as much as you buy. If you're sitting on a hundred thousand rounds when you kill over, did you win the game? I'm not so sure you did. But I will apologize for 
hurting people's feelings. I, I forgot the sensitivity and softness of people. Some people can't take it. Most of the people that it gets under their skin are probably sitting on 30 bricks in the middle of the biggest subdivision in their town. Hadn't shot a rifle or a pistol in 10 years. But now don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there's something wrong with living in a subdivision. I don't want to hurt your feelings. You Got to watch what you say around here. Nothing wrong with living in a subdivision. But if you live in a subdivision and you got one spare room stuffed full of guns and ammo, you might have a little bit of hoarding tendency. I'm just saying. That might be considered hoarding. Now, if you see here, I got to change the subject a little bit. Got this ballast doll for a Christmas present. Got some these gun wipes. And this here is the kind you dilute with water. And I usually use this aerosol to clean my guns. If you never used any battle style, it's good stuff. It's kind of hard to find. Never used these wipes. Gonna give them a try. I've never had any of this that you dilute. But I'm gonna try it as well. And this stuff's good for guns, leather, knives, tools, locks, marine, wood, metal, and rubber. You can put it just about on anything. It's good stuff, and it'll stay on the gun without evaporating a lot longer than the old cheapo gun oils. But, part two, I made part one, I was a little aggravated about the old guy buying all the ammo that he wasn't going to use. Part two, I was a little aggravated because of the dead gun auto parts morons. But... Like I said, my videos a lot of time coincide with whatever mood I'm in that day. I don't put a lot of thought in them, as you can tell. I ain't trying to get anybody all upset, but this bucket you see, it'll get shot. It'll be gone here in a month or two if it'll ever get warm out here, warm enough where I can shoot it without bundling up like I was headed to the South Pole. But buy what you need, shoot what you buy. That's all I'm saying. And that's all I'm going to say. And that's all I got. Thanks for watching.